Hi, welcome back uh, to part two of our low poly gun tutorial. Before we begin today though, I just want to ask, have you guys ever played a light gun game before? And if so, what was your favorite? Mine would have to be House of the Dead and Time Crisis, both in the arcade. Those are great. Um, but let's not waste more time and jump right into part two of our NES Zapper modeling tutorial. Alright, so in the last part we made the gun grip, the gun barrel, and a couple of other pieces. Now let's work on this mid area over here, right? Um, we added it to its own layer so we can hide it just by pressing V. And I'm going to add a plane into the scene. So pressing T on the keyboard, dropping the subdivisions down to one, and then I'm going to rotate it. So pressing E, holding down J, and rotating it 90 degrees. And over here, what I want to do is just move it into this area. And what I'm going to do is just line it up to basically where this point um, meets this corner. All right, uh, let's extrude out a section so we can build this area. So I'm going to go into edge mode, select the edge, pressing W to go into my move tool, holding down shift and extruding that out. And now what I can do is grab this vertex, bring it to here, and grab this one and bring it to here. Nice and simple. All right, let's grab this edge as well. Edge mode, holding down, holding down shift, dragging this out to here. And we'll move this point into place. And then this back area, what we can do is grab these two vertices, bring them down to here. So that that bottom point meets there. And then I can go into edge mode and extrude out this section. And I can grab this vertex and bring it to here. Right. It's not exactly aligned, but it's, it's close enough. So for this low poly piece, and now let's go into here. And just like the gun grip, we will extrude this. So let's go into object mode, hold down shift, right mouse button, extrude. And I'm just gonna drag this arrow out um, we don't know how thick to make it yet, right? But I'm just going to bring it to about here. And then let's go into object mode, um, pressing W to go into my move tool. We need to reset this pivot. So let's center it and hold down X and snap to the middle. All right. And now let's um, make the rest of our gun visible again so that we can size up this mid area. So I'm just going to select that and I'm just going to scale that in roughly to about there. I think that looks pretty good like that. Okay, and now you can see on the um, original gun, it had some holes here. These are just cosmetic, but they look pretty nice. So I think what we'll do is we'll replicate that a bit. Right. So let's uh, take our object again, let's hide the rest of the gun. And to do that, we're gonna use Maya's Boolean operation. So let's first add a cylinder into the scene. I'm gonna press T on the keyboard, reduce this down to six sides and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm gonna hold down J, rotate it 90 degrees, and then I wanna scale it down and scale it out as well. And let's take a look at in this view. And then we'll duplicate that, move this over to here that right about right there and then we'll control D to duplicate again and move this to about right here all right let's reveal the rest of the gun to take a look all right as you can see um, looks pretty good you can see the gun barrel I don't know if hopefully you guys can see through the um, image but right now the gun barrel this part is running about here so this hole is gonna reveal basically some empty space and the gun barrel. So what I'm going to do is actually move this up a little bit. Hope that makes sense. All right, there we go. And now let's go back into other view. We'll hide our gun again. And now what we need to do is combine all three cylinders. So take, um, select all three cylinders and click combine. And now we need to use 
these cylinders to punch a hole through your object. So first select your object, then uh, hold shift, select your cylinders. And now what we're going to do is go to mesh, booleans, and choose difference. And that'll subtract the cylinders from our uh, midsection mesh. And just like that, we have some holes in them. Um, now what we want to do is a little bit of cleanup so that we don't have to do it later. You can see that this edge runs to here. Um, everywhere, everywhere else looks okay, maybe up here as well. So let's, um, we have a couple options. We can go into vertex mode, snap this to this one and merge it, or we can use Maya's target weld tool, right? So click on that, hover over your point and just click and drag to there, right? I'm just gonna undo that though. Um, what we can do to make this a little bit faster is turn on symmetry. So I'm gonna enable world Z symmetry for myself so that it's going this way. And then what I wanna do is go into here. Um, whenever you enable symmetry, by the way, just make sure that it's highlighting the point on the other side, which it is, right? Um, now, if I drag to here, the other side gets done as well, right? And we can do the same up here. There you go. So that part's done. Let's turn off symmetry for now. And then what I want to do is uh, press Q to go back into select. Let's reveal the rest of our gun. And now uh, let's go into object mode. And what we can do now is combine it. But what I want to do is um, give it some color first. So I'm going to select um, first the gun barrel, the two sights that we have right, and the gun grip, I'm going to make that gray. So um, I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, go to assign new material, and I'm going to choose a fong. And over here, what I want to do is just navigate these inputs. You can scroll with the mouse wheel or um, just use these arrows. But what we can do is to make it a little bit, little bit easier, we don't need these inputs anymore. What we can do is actually select everything first, delete the history, right? Now, if we select these objects, we have our fong right there. So it's nice and close. And I'm just going to make that a little bit darker. And I think that looks pretty good. And then what I want to do is also make this part lighter. So I'm going to select this object. Basically, I'm going to box select all of these and unselect these two objects. And then here, I can hold down the right mouse button, assign new material, and I'm gonna choose Fong again, and this time I'm just going to make this a little bit lighter. All right. And we still need to make our trigger, but the first thing I want to do is um, maybe um, Boolean this all together, right? So um, to do that, we would select everything and go up to Mesh, Booleans, and choose Union. Um, but sometimes this will cause a problem, so let's do it. So you can see it changed the color of everything. I don't want that, so we're just going to undo that. So what we're going to do is do it in two parts. Um, first, let's Boolean um, this, this, and this. So basically the gun grip and the two sights. And go to Mesh Boolean Union. There we go. And now that's one piece, and the interior geometry has been uh, deleted. So that's perfect. Um, and then this part here, we can just box select these, unselect this, and again, go to booleans, sorry, mesh, booleans, and union. And that'll retain the color. Um, I'm doing it in two materials for the presentation of this, just it's fast. But if you were to take this into a game and texture it, you might only want this to have one material. In that case, you would UV unwrap this, right? Just because it'll be more performant if it's using one material. But for this, I'm just doing it on a two or three materials, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do next is, um, let's make the trigger next. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna add a cube into the scene. Just scale this in a bit. I'm just gonna close our attribute editor for now. And I'm gonna bring this up to here. And let's take a look in the side view. Bring this to about here. I'm going to add a cut maybe around here. Grab these vertices and just bring them in a touch. 
I think that looks pretty good like that. Let's take a look over here. All right, let's get to this one, uh, give this one a color as well. So select it, hold down the right mouse button, sign new material, I'm gonna choose Fong, and then what I wanna do is just make this red. All right, looks pretty good. And now what we can do is at the front of the gun here, I'm just going to um, extrude this in a little bit. So let's select this face. Um, let's extrude, so shift, right mouse button, extrude. And I'm just going to offset this a bit. I'm gonna press G to repeat, press W to go into my move tool, and then just push this in. Right. And it's not gonna go in all the way. The original light gun uh, had a piece of plastic here, which interacted with the game, right? Um, so that's all we need to do for that area. And then I'm keeping the trigger separate because, you know, it's nice to have something that maybe animates in your game. Maybe you want the trigger to just um, maybe move like that a little bit, right? So I'm just going to leave that the way it is. Um, however, we could combine these two pieces, right, and do another Boolean. So let's do that. Um, something to keep in mind is that when you perform Booleans, um, it likes very clean geometry, right? So sometimes you'll have an issue where um, the Boolean operation fails and the mesh will partially disappear or fully disappear, and you'll want to clean that up before you do a Boolean operation. But let's try this, right? So I'm going to select this, select this one. This time I'm going to actually um, turn on X-ray so you guys can see it, right? Right now we have a geometry that's inside of other geometry, right? And so if we go up here to mesh boolean union you'll see what it does it deletes that interior geometry so that worked out for us let's take a look right so no issues nothing disappeared and it's removed that interior geometry it's almost like we modeled it as one piece so quite nice and now we have this trigger so we're pretty much done but let's talk about this gun i'm going to turn off the grid a little bit um, before we wrap up uh, this tutorial this is made up of a bunch of n-gons, right? It's still fairly performant. We have a, um, a mesh that's 488 triangles, so which is very low, right? Um, but we can make it even more. So um, when you're making low poly art, sometimes you're making it for a platform where you have to consider um, si um, being very efficient with the geometry. So every triangle counts, right? So let's take a look at a couple areas where we could improve this a bit more. Um, first, let's talk about the n-gon situation. Right? By the time this reaches the game engine, it's actually going to be reduced to triangles anyways. So n-gons here won't really hurt it. Um, it's very planar. Um, we're not really going to run into shading issues. So you want to basically balance um, your time with the efficiency of the modeling. So this you could leave at n-gons. You could triangulate it now in, in Maya um, and then before you take it into the game engine if you want or just let the game engine triangulate it. Um, but in this case, um, it's not going to really change too much. Um, and then what we want to do is take a look at some areas where we could even reduce it further, right? So on this gun, for example, right over here, we have 40, 488 triangles. Um, I can open up the um, target weld option and let's just go into vertex mode and I'm going to choose target weld and I can target weld this to here. Let's turn on symmetry so you can see world Z, and I can bring this point to here, right? And you can see the triangles dropping, and it doesn't really change anything, and it makes our mesh more efficient, right? Same thing with here, I can take this point up to here, right? It's changed the shading, we just need to harden this uh, uh, mesh in a second, right? And now we have 480 triangles, so that's pretty good. And then um, there are some other areas as well that, um, can be fixed, like over here, this edge is running nowhere. This point, right, we'll just connect it to here. That'll reduce that triangle count. Um, and then anywhere else. So yeah, have a look at your mesh, uh, see how you can improve it. I think I covered most of that. Um, so now let's take a look at the trigger as well. So this trigger, it's pretty cheap, it's 20 triangles. Let's isolate it so you can see. Um, let's turn on isolation. There we go. And over here, we have some faces that don't really service anything. So I'm just gonna take this one, this one, and this one, and I'm just gonna delete them entirely. And now we're down to 14 triangles, right? And what we can do with this is, again, go into target weld, 
And we could, we could even take this vertex down to here, right? And just like that, this has been reduced. And let's unisolate that. And it's down to 12 triangles. So those, those are just some ways we can make this even more efficient. Oftentimes though, one of the ways to make it efficient is really in the design. So if I were to make this for a game and I really want it to be really like even less, um, uh, like cheaper, <laughs> cheaper, less topology, right? Less triangles. I would maybe redesign this section and make it maybe three instead of four pieces. Just stuff like that is what you want to consider. So just want to talk a little bit about that before we wrapped up today. Yeah. But now we have our, pretty much our low poly gun, our low poly um, NES zapper. All right, that concludes our tutorial on how to model the NES zapper. Hope you had as much fun as I did on making this one. Um, we'll see you in the next video though. Until next time, this is Digital Dreambox your destination for game art.